folks and friends and welcome back to the factory. Today we are making the last doll in my ongoing Sailor Princess collection. This has been a wild ride for a year and a half, but with this one all 10 will be finally done. You folks voted on the order and the last one we have here is Sailor Uranus. She is my absolute favorite and I grew up loving her. I love her androgynous dual natures, her powers, her personality, and her love for Neptune. This couple is canon by the way, though, depending on which version of Sailor Moon you grew up with, you might remember them as cousins. Sorry to break it up to you though, but this was just an attempt at censorship. Let's say that the 90s were not as open to queer relationships as we are now, sadly. For this series, I wanted to use all different doll sculpts for each character, with the exception of course of Moon and Mini Moon, who are mother and daughter. For Uranus, I selected Spectra, which is one of my absolute favorite Monster High dolls. To start the prepping process, I grabbed a pair of scissors and I cut her hair as short as I could. You could use a clipper too if you have one. I apparently did not film myself removing her factory paint, but you can see it in other videos. In case you want to know though, I used pure acetone and disposable cotton pads. I soaked her head in boiling water for a few minutes before yanking it off the body without damage. And while the vinyl is still soft and squishy, I use a flat screwdriver to scrape the hair stubbles from the inside. I will then use tweezers to remove them from there through the neck hole. Uranus's short hairstyle is not ideal for rerouted hair, so I opted to make a wig. I am following the Mosekito method and I will link her tutorials in the description box for you. The first thing I need to do is to make a wig cap. We want it to be solid enough because we will glue the hair directly on it. For this, I use a stretchy piece of fabric and a rubber band. You want to make sure there is as little creases as possible. Also, do not forget to protect the doll head first. Kitchen plastic is absolutely perfect for it. You can safely go beyond the scalp limit. If you have too much fabric, you can trim some later, but if you have too little, it will be very hard to add more. Once everything is secured, you will need any kind of PVA glue similar to a Helmer's glue. Using a brush, apply a generous coat all over the wig cap and let it dry completely. You will have to repeat the process at least three times for the cap to really change and solidify. I usually do it during the evening and then I leave it alone overnight to make sure it's perfectly dry the next day. When all is said and done, you should be left with a solid crust that fits snugly on the doll's head. It should feel a bit more like plastic than fabric, though you can still make out the texture. The important thing though is that it fits well. You can then trim out the excess fabric. Pay no attention to the error of continuity here. I have forgotten to show and trim the cat on camera before doing the face. Autumn's weather is a little unpredictable, so I jump on days when I can use MSC effectively. But yes, in case you wondered, you can definitely do the whole wig cap process from the beginning on a painted head. Just be careful and protect it. Now we can go for the face up for real this time. Like usual, I start with a crude sketch of the features. I've also prepped and primed the head with Mr. Super Clear Sealant. You'd need at least two or three coats to start. MSC is finicky, so it's best to use it on low humidity days. I do not spray if it's 65% or higher. And of course, you have to let each coat dry well before applying another, which usually means 15 between 30 minutes of wait time. For Uranus here, I am starting the blushing process. I am applying a neutral flesh tone color on most of her face first, because I want to give her a more natural complexion as opposed to ghostly white. I leave some areas white, but only those places on which would be the uh, brightest highlights. Then I slowly carve her features, as if I was a makeup artist doing some contouring. I also lay some base colors. And for all of that, I am using soft pastels. 
By the way, Spectra has some amazing cheekbones, so I want to make sure that they are part of the show. As for Uranus's makeup, I am going for a smoother, smoky effect with a more natural nude lip. Okay, so I struggled a bit with her brows here, to be honest. All my princesses has a sad or innocent look to them, but for some reason, I was not feeling it at all on this one. So you can kind of see how conflicted I felt drawing them, like trying to compromise, which in the end, it did not make me truly happy. So yeah, absolutely no foreshadowing here. At this stage of the process, I'm switching to watercolor pencils to start applying more pigments and define more details like the irises, creases, and the water lines. Like usual, I work in layers, spraying sealant to save my progress or give myself a boost when colors stop building. I was on layer 3 or 4 here if I remember well. The magic of MSC make it so the more you use it, the better a surface will be to draw on. It's often described as paper-like. You can also, at a certain point, use lighter colors over darker ones without any issue. Though the sealant sometimes seems to have its own personality, so yes, sometimes it's, it's a little easier and sometimes a little harder. I think it boils down to temperatures and humidity both, but even then, it's a bit harder to make sure. Though, after working with it, uh, with it for a while, you, believe me, you will pick up cues and ways to work with it efficiently. You will become a MSC Whisperer, yes? No? Uh, okay. So, I'm also making a lot of changes to my workstation. I've swapped my whole dirty background with this one, which is way easier to clean. And I'm also trying to work the best angles for my lights, which is not, not a super easy thing for me with how the desk I work on is cramped in a corner. And yeah, <laughs> I'm also trying to stabilize my camera's focus, so let me know what you think. Alright now, I'm switching to paints. I am using my trusty watercolors, but with just a little bit of water. I am adding texture and highlights, mostly, and defining some features just to make everything pop and be more coherent. Uh, to be honest, I'm on the fence about it all. I think that maybe I've gone a bit too far with paints in my last few repaints. And those brows... I feel there's no saving them, so maybe with the hair, like she has bangs, maybe it will work better and look good? I feel that it's an artist thing. You struggle to find your own style, then you're all always trying to improve and surpass what you have done before. It's a never-ending quest. It's equally fulfilling and stress-inducing, in my opinion. I try to be loose and free with my dolls as much as possible, so, so just I don't get frustrated. And I'm sure a lot of you folks can relate to that. These feelings, they, they made me quit art for years, honestly. Though, when I started doing dolls in 2018, it felt like I stumbled upon the Holy Grail. I now live and breathe art like I never did before. And I consider myself extremely lucky for it, and I owe it in part to you all. Again, thank you for being interested in my passion. I wish this kind of awakening to everyone who struggles with art today. 
It's a rough path in life to be committed to. A really rough one. But for some of us, there is no other way. And of course, of course, we must also survive. But with art, we can not only thrive, but we can shine. Art is important, folks. Never let anyone look down on you for loving art or being artistic. Alright, that was quite a tangent, so back to our scheduled programming now. <laughs> After I'm done with Uranus' face, I grabbed my well-loved mica powders from the brand Magicfly and I dust some gold on her cheeks all the way up to her temples. Not bad looking, not bad looking at all. I don't like them brows, but I would not call them ugly either. Alright now, the wig. I'm really doing my best here to show you a bit more on the process. This is a spool of thread. The head is placed on a pencil and the pencil is inside. And I've protected everything with kitchen plastic. It's a little weird, but it will serve its purpose. After positioning the wig cap, I used the pencil to mark where I want the part. I also marked where I want the bangs, and we will glue some yarn wefts on the cap in a spiral-like manner. Right before that, I did paint the wig cap a shade darker from the hair color that I will use. It will help to give some depth and blend in if the cap is partly visible. I am using a small pin to make sure the cap does not move while I work on it, because I will cut and style the hair as I work my way from the bottom to the top. My wefts were made using the Mosekito method, link in the description box below. They are made of the same acrylic yarn I use for Charlie. I kept the shorter strands for this project. I wanted to use some white tacky glue to adhere them, but mine was a little old and refused to go out of the bottle, so I ultimately swapped for Elmer's glue during the process. Either way, you want to start gluing the yarn wefts at the bottom of the wig, ideally in the back. I'm going to start by doing the whole perimeter, actually. This is where it becomes a work of patience. And trust me, I'm the least patient person on this planet. You want to cover those wefts with enough glue for them to stick well, and then wait for it to dry completely before starting to cut and style layer by layer. 
I am using an eyebrow razor to make nice wispy edges, as opposed to the blunt cut of scissors, but even then, it takes a lot of dedication and time. We are going for a nice layered pixie and this is not the easiest style. Second layer of hair here, and yeah, this wig took me the most time out of everything I did for this custom. I worked on it for 4 days, but with of course long drying times in between. And yes, some doll artists use hot glue, but for me it's, it's risking adding a lot of thickness. I mean, PVA glue looks so much cleaner in my opinion, but, but yeah, it <laughs> takes a lot of time, so yeah, I guess I might try it in the future, maybe. To make the part line now, you want to take at least two nice clean and full widths for it. We are going to glue the first one uh, in the opposite direction of the airflow and then flip it back. The fold is what you want to be precise, and once done, you can add another weft in the opposite direction. That's the end result after I added some texture and I'd say it looks pretty close to the manga version of the character, so I really love it, I'm pleased. The texture, I made it the same way I would do curls, with a hot chopstick. I usually heat it up inside my hair straightener and then since Uranus has really short hair and that I didn't want to burn myself, I used a pen brush to help me hold and press sections of hair into place. A bit of hairspray after and voila! While that wig was at various stages of drying, I went on to start on the clothes. I selected some fabric and some lace tool for the outfit. I want to give her a gown to fit with the other dolls, but also with an androgynous twist if I may say so. So the main idea here is a long white skirt with a navy blue tube top. I also picked up a bit of yellow fabric, but I did not end up using it. first thing I did was to roughly measure the amount of fabric I would need and cut it to size. I also cut some of the tool because it was way too long. I made sure it would line up nicely with the white layer though. After hemming what I needed, I gathered both fabric together and sewed them in a way that the folds would stay in place and not move around. And then I connected the top and the bottom and did so by sewing the good side facing the other good side. I sewed the back of the skirt, leaving the rest open for a closure, and started gluing some gold gems to add some detailing. Alright, now for a twist. I actually went really simple with it and decided to give her just a proper jacket. I went in with white for it. I 
I initially started with the pattern that I made for Charlie's jacket, but I swapped the two back pieces for a larger single one, because I won't need a closure in the back. I'll make it so that she wears it open. After attaching both sleeves and doing my hems, I pinned the thing good side against good side to sew the sides. <laughs> it actually doesn't fall perfectly at the bottom, but that hem can be redone. The most important thing is to make sure that the sleeves are well placed. Once I'm done with it, that's my result. And I think I kinda forgot to add the dark flavor on this one, but it's fine because I like it that way and I guess that's my call, yes, that's my call. After looking at what I could add to decorate and add details, I ended up with this. I gave the jacket a navy blue color, I sewed a little white flower with a gem in the middle, and I did some tiny buttons that I painted with gold acrylic. It bring in all the yellow that I needed. I'm also showing you the black closure I finally added. I used a piece of velcro, but I also added a snap at, at the skirt for more support. Then I was contemplating using that little golden chain as a multi-layered necklace. Okay, so these boots are already customized as you can see. I actually went in and stole them from another doll of mine that I made last year. Ironically, a Sailor Uranus doll. I made it for an Instagram collab. I didn't nail the hair then though. I went in and added a bit of fresh paint on the soles and the straps. And now she's wearing pants! Actually, I made these for the same Sailor Uranus doll from last year. She had the choice between removable pants and skirt. Now though, I think it's the time to put everything together. Actually... Actually, no. I, I don't like this face on her. There's nothing with the face up itself, nothing wrong with it. It's beautiful. It's just it's just not my arca. It's fine. I wanted to change my nail color anyways. The face paint stained a little bit, as expected, but it's nothing that I'm scared to work with. Okay, so new sketch. This time, with smaller eyes for a starter, a bit like those that I drew on Neptune. She's going to look a bit more serious, but still not mad or anything close to that. I 
I'm blushing her the exact same way first, except that this time I wanted less makeup around the eyes. I'm also going to tone down the colors on her cheeks from pink to more salmon or even orange. Basically, I'm doing her the way I would do a male doll. She also has a bit more work around the creases to hide the staining. This is not a bad look on dolls though. I am taking my time to define every little feature. I also plan to give her less eyelashes just to try and nail the more androgynous face. Also. Her eyes are listed as dark blue on fan sites, so instead of going for a pale, luminous color like I usually do, I'm going for a more intense pigment. of some small finishing touches here and there. I even got the black pencil out. I like using a bit of dark brown or even black to cast a slight shadow on the eyeballs. I think it makes for a nice effect. For highlights, I used a cream color and of course some pure white. I also went a little bit easier with the paint, trying to really focus on white needed just a bit more help. I mean, I prefer this face to the other one. It's definitely a different look. It proves that the same sculpt can give you very different results. I also used that time to paint Spectra's arms and hands a solid color. And I gave a light blushing to her torso. So yeah, now though, I think we are ready to see the end result. For real this time.
so, what do you think of her? Please let me know in the comments below. My next doll is going to be Halloween themed, and I am really excited about that project. I hope you like it. In the meantime though, friends, please, stay safe.